This is The World Tomorrow with Herbert W. Armstrong. This program is Pasadena One. The series number is 8W. Program number is 8W-6. The date, June 17, 1978. Ambassador Television Productions. Well, greetings, everybody. In this current series of telecasts, I am speaking as no man in our time has spoken to the public. We're in a very confused world today, a very upset world. Why the violence everywhere? Why the uh, rampant crime and increasing so rapidly that the police staffs in various cities can't keep up with it? Why are families breaking down, the divorce rate going up, every kind of immorality, every kind of everything that is wrong is taking peace away from the earth? It seems that no man has been able to explain this, but I not only intend to explain it as I have been doing in this series, of which I believe this is the seventh of this present series of telecasts, and I am going to show you that soon these troubles are going to be over. And very soon, we're going to have world peace. I bring you the one and only possible message of world peace. The World Tomorrow. The Worldwide Church of God presents The World Tomorrow with Herbert W. Armstrong. Herbert W. Armstrong. Now, we need to understand what has been causing the troubles. We need to understand what is back of all of this. We need to understand what is going to bring peace to this world. This world has lost sight of its creator, of its God. He reveals to us the cause. It's in his word, which we call the Holy Bible. Uh, and it's very plain, it's very easy to read, it's plain and simple and clear. And it seems, however, that almost nobody understands the Bible. I know I was brought up in one of the very respected Protestant denominations as a boy. And when I was challenged and began to open up the Bible and look into it for myself for the first time at age 35, I believe I was, I was simply dumbfounded. I found things that I, I read, the things that Jesus taught, things that the Bible teaches that were, well, contrary to what I had b believed. I found that what I had been taught was just contrary to what the Bible says. I had always supposed that the churches in this world get their religion out of the Bible. The first thing, 50 years ago, that opened my eyes, that dumbfounded me, was to learn that that is not true. The churches of this world do not get their religion out of the Bible. They try to read it into it. My friends, where does it all begin? If we start trying to understand today's events and where we're leading and what's going to happen from today's vantage point, I repeat once again, as I've said so many times, it's just like going into a motion picture show or seeing a motion picture on your television set and beginning when it's about three-fourths over. You don't know what went on before. You don't know what led up to what you're now seeing. And consequently, you're confused. You don't uh, understand. You can't get the drift of what you're seeing because you don't know what led up to it. Now, I've been beginning at the very beginning in the Bible. And as I have said before, most people would suppose the Bible begins in Genesis 1, verse 1, but it doesn't. The event there described 
happened quite a while after the events described in John, the first chapter in the New Testament. Now, I don't know how much before. I don't know whether it was uh, uh, just a year or two or three or a few years or whether it was millions of years because the Bible doesn't tell us that. But it all begins in John 1, verses 1 to 3 in the New Testament. This goes back in prehistory. This begins before anything uh, that we have in history on this earth. In the beginning, it says here, verse 1, John 1, in the New Testament, in the beginning was the Word. Now, I've explained before that word, word, comes from the Greek word logos, and it means the spokesman, uh, the one who does the speaking. And the Word uh, was with God, and the Word was God. Now, the Word is a personage. That personage was with God, and God is a personage. So there you have two personages uh, together. The same was in the beginning with God. My friends, that was way back before there was any material or physical universe. That was before there was any human being. That was before uh, even this uh, thing of evolution was supposed to have begun, which, of course, is, a, is a, f- uh, a great fake anyway, if you understand the truth. It says, all things were made by him, that is, the word, the logos, the spokesman, and without him was not anything made that was made. And I've quoted before how in the third chapter of Ephesians, it says, God created all things by Jesus Christ. Now, let me read a little further. In verse 14, the Word, the one that had been the Word with God way back there, prehistory, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That then was Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ did not come until about uh, approximately 4,000 years after the first humans were placed on this earth. Now I've shown you, first, God and the Word were back there alone. Two great supernatural spirit beings of supreme power, of supreme mind. Do you know that man has been made in the image of God? And God has given us a mind a great deal like His. Only we have as the Bible reveals, a human spirit that empowers the physical brain with intellect, which no animal has. It is this human spirit that gives us knowledge of physical things, but not of spiritual things. God first and the Word must have been thinking, and I've explained that before, and how they planned before they created. And the first thing they created were angels, and angels are made out of spirit. And still there was no physical universe. They were out in, just in space. Spirit beings don't need to be on a planet like we are with gravity that pulls us down to the earth all the time. And uh, they were not. But God then, we come next to the first chapter of Genesis, after the angels had been created, And God had formed a great plan for what he had in the future. Now we come back to Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens, and it should be plural, and is in most modern translations, and was the way Moses wrote it. But Moses wrote that in the Hebrew language. And the word that Moses wrote for God was the Hebrew name Elohim. Now Elohim is a uniplural. It is a name like uh, company, like church like a family, uh, more than one person, but one family, one church, one group, or one uh, athletic team, or whatever you might, uh, uh, might have. And uh, the earth was uh, without form and void. That is, it had become, the Hebrew words there indicate a condition of decay, and uh, without form and void, or chaotic and in confusion. Now, it is a result of those angels. Very few people understand that God placed angels on earth before the first humans were put here. 
And if you don't begin back there, if you don't understand all of that, you don't understand what's going on today. You don't understand the reason for the troubles that we have in the world, troubles that I discuss with kings and with presidents and prime ministers and heads of government all over this world. And they don't understand it. They don't know why. Many of them are at war with other governments. We have violence and troubles everywhere in the world. Nevertheless, the word Elohim is a uniplural, and it means more than one person that formed one God. Now, the, the one called God in John 1.1 1, 1 is one personage. The one called the Word is another personage. You have two personages there, but the two formed one Elohim, or one God. Now, when God said he was going to form man, he didn't say, let me... But God said in verse 26, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. There was more than one person there. God is a family. Now at that time, the Word had not become flesh. The Word was not the Son of God at that time, but became the Son of God as He was born in the human flesh as I say, about 4,000 years after Adam. And I'm coming to that in just a moment or two. But first God placed angels on earth. We know the angels were created first because in Job the 38th chapter we find that the angels were already here when the earth was created and the angels shouted for joy because it was to be their abode. It was to be their home. Herbert W. Armstrong will return right after this message. Plain Truth clears up the issues. Plain Truth brightens your understanding. Plain truth sharpens your outlook. In today's world, you need the Plain Truth magazine. For your free subscription to Plain Truth, call this toll-free number, 800-423-4444. That's 800-423-4444. See for yourself, Plain Truth magazine. Now, I've mentioned before, and I'm going to mention this once again. Some of these things I think I can't mention too often because it is new. It's new to most of you. Most have not understood it at all. It is contrary to uh, what you might call uh, uh, the ordinary Christian belief as it has come up in this world. These angels were put on this earth. It was to be their home, their abode, and God, uh, God in creating, it's a good deal like, uh, uh, I wonder if you have seen one of these unfinished uh, furniture stores where they have unfinished furniture. The wood and everything is there. It's, it's uh, made of wood usually, but uh, it's the final polish or varnish or the paint and so on has not been put on. You do that yourself. And of course, if you can do the job correctly, you save money. And that is the way God created the earth. It was perfect as far as he went, just as these furniture is supposed to be, uh, the unfinished furniture. What is there is uh, as perfect as it's going to be. You just add something to it to beautify it more. And God intended the angels to add to this earth. Instead, they destroyed it. Now, God put over those angels <coughs> a throne with a king whose name was... Uh, uh, Lucifer, and uh, Lucifer was a super archangel, higher than ordinary angels, and he was the king to rule with the government of God over the angels. The government of God is based on a law, a way of living. It is the way of life. It is the way to peace. It is the way to happiness. It is the way to every good thing that anyone could possibly want. Now, this Lucifer 
and the name Lucifer even means shining star of the dawn or a light bringer, but he turned into darkness instead of light. He turned away from God's way. He turned into rebellion against God and against the government of God. It went to his head. He was perfect in all of his ways from the day that God created him until iniquity was found in him. And then the government of God ceased on this earth. Now that left God with a great problem. God himself, which then consisted, remember at that time, of only uh, the one who later became the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, or God and the Word, as it originally was, the only beings on earth that would not go contrary to the law of God, which is the way of righteousness, the way of peace, the way of happiness, the way of everything good, everything that we could want. And that government with that kind of law was taken away from the earth. And instead, violence came to the earth. Destruction came. Light was turned into darkness. God knew that he needed millions or even billions of beings to do the work he wanted done to, uh, in other words, like the unfinished furniture, to finish the creation that he had made all over the universe. Because, as I read in Genesis 1, then he created the heavens and the earth, the whole physical universe, but it was not a finished creation. It was perfect as far as it went, but it was not yet finished. And the angels, instead of finishing it, had destroyed it. Now, the only solution that God had was to reproduce himself. That is the greatest thing that God could possibly start out to do, or, or ever did do. And uh, you'll read in the 104th Psalm, and verse 30, it says, Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. The face of the earth had been devastated. It had been brought to ruin and decay and ugliness instead of beauty. And now God renewed the face of the earth. We turn back again now to Genesis 1.1. I've gone through this in previous telecasts. Let me re re just renew your uh, memory on this. And the earth had become in this chaotic form as a result of what the angels did. You read in 2 Peter, the second chapter, of how the angels sinned. You read of this Lucifer in the 12th chapter of uh, Isaiah, and I've read it before on this program, in the, in the 28th chapter of Ezekiel. And uh, the earth became now in this chaotic form and uh, in decay, and darkness was upon the face of the deep or of the uh, watery surface. There was no, uh, no land, everything was ocean. It was all water at that time. And it was all dark and darkness. Because this Lucifer, whose name was changed now to Satan, meaning the adversary and the enemy of God, had brought, brought it into darkness. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. Now I read to you how he sends forth his Spirit and then God said, let there be light. The first thing he did was to bring light out of darkness, to bring understanding out of confusion and of error and misconceptions. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And then he began to form day and night. Now, what you read in the first chapter of Genesis is not the original creation of the earth, it is the renewing of the face of the earth after the angels had been here, we don't know, perhaps millions of years. But they had violated the um, laws of God and the government of God that God had put here to regulate and to, to keep those angels all pulling together to get the big job done. That government had been taken away from the earth. Now, God's great motive now was to restore the government of God to the earth and then to create character. And I have explained before, the one thing God cannot create instantaneously by fiat is character. Holy, righteous, perfect character. Herbert W. Armstrong will return right after this message.
Well, life's been pretty good. Summer home, yacht, vacation when I want it. <laughs> Some little kids sure spend a lot of time with that. Too bad they never last. Yeah, a lot of things are like that. The kids are grown now and... Hmm, Sandy and I aren't getting any younger. Hmm. Is this all there is? You can know the answer to this age-old question, why were you born? To request your free copy, dial direct 800-423-4444. That's 800-423-4444. God created the angels. They were higher than man. They were superior to man. They were, comp they were immortal. They were composed of spirit. We're composed of material substance out of the dust of the ground. And uh, however, uh, they had turned the wrong way. And consequently, they couldn't go to all of the other planets of this uh, solar system and uh, of all the other... Uh, uh, systems far out into outer space and do the job that God wanted done. Now God is going to reproduce himself and to do that he formed man out of the matter that he had created on this earth. And he uh, formed man in his likeness and his image. In other words, of the same form and shape. And he put in us a mind just like the mind of God except our minds are inferior and our minds are confined to the physical knowledge of this universe. You cannot understand the things of God without another spirit in addition to the human spirit that is in us and that is the Holy Spirit of God. And so very, very few on earth have ever had that. So to the first man, God said in effect, if you will obey me and my government, Ultimately, I will give you immortal life like the angels have, but you have to develop character first. And you then can succeed this Lucifer, this Satan, who is disqualified but must stay on the throne until a successor qualifies and is inducted into office. You, as God said to Adam, and I'm just paraphrasing this in my own words, you can take of the tree of life, which is of my spirit, of my spirit and receive my life, my mind, my understanding, and my way of life, and restore my government on earth, and be the father of the human family that is put here to build that kind of character. That is the reason man was put on the earth. Adam said to God, in effect, God, I want you to get your nose out of my affairs. I am going to decide for myself what is right and wrong. So he took uh, with his wife from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. In other words, to decide for themselves what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is not. And they sa said, we won't uh, let you tell us, Almighty God, what is right and what is wrong. We will decide that for ourselves. God said, in effect then, to Adam, the choice has been yours. You had to decide. Character is the right of a separate entity, separate from God, of its own free will to come to see the right way, which is God's way, from the wrong, and to choose the right, and then to go the right way instead of the wrong. Even though within ourselves there is a pull and a desire to go the wrong way, Character is to control a self and to decide that we will go the right way, the way of God, regardless. Now, once we have done that, that develops character within us. And that is the purpose for which humans were put on earth. Then we have the great job of going throughout all this universe. You read that in the second chapter of Hebrews. You read of it in the eighth uh, uh, of Psalms. And you read of it in the eighth chapter of uh, uh, of uh, Romans, of how the ultimate uh, destiny of mankind is to go through all the universe and to finish the creation. What a wonderful job that is. And to bring peace, to bring happiness, to bring joy, to bring salvation. 
until there will be no more pain, no sorrow, nor suffering. Nothing of that kind, only joy and continual happiness and to be creators and to be thinking of new things that need to be done, right things to be done. And uh, consequently, of uh, working at those things under the Creator God. Now God, as I said, is a family, and He made man so that man could be born into that family. But the first man, Adam, rejected it. And so God said to him, and let me put it in my own words as a paraphrase, put it in modern language, God said to him, Okay, you have decided to reject me, you've rebelled against my government, you don't want me to be your Lord, your Savior, your God. You don't want my knowledge. I sentence you and your descendants, which will be the whole world that will come from you. I sentence you to 6,000 years of being cut off from me until you cannot have access to me and you cannot gain my knowledge. You'll have to create your own knowledge whatever way you can. But remember this former archangel, now Satan, is here, and he will be getting to you, and he will be getting to your, to your children, and he will pump into them the way of vanity, of lust and greed, of jealousy and envy, of uh, destruction. In other words, the way of God is the way of giving, it's the way of love, it's outgoing concern. And the way of Satan is incoming, lust and greed, vanity, exalting the self, jealousy and envy toward others, a spirit of competition against others, wanting to compete, wanting to prevent the other from getting anything, to take it all for yourself. When I speak to heads of governments, when I speak to people in the capitals of the world, I make it as simple as possible because in, in many cases they haven't had the type of education that we've had in this country. And I say there are the two ways of life. Only the two ways of living, when you get down to it from a philosophical point of view, one is the way of giving and the other is the way of getting. Now the whole thing that is wrong in this world that man is going the way of getting. That's the way that Adam chose. God says, all right, you and your followers can go that way. It is the way of, as I say, getting, of taking, of exalting yourself, but of uh, uh, having jealousy and envy and hatred toward others. And that is the thing that has gripped this world. Now God didn't make us that way, but Satan begins to pump that sort of thing into us very early. This Satan has deceived the whole world. It's pretty hard to, under, uh, to believe that nations could be deceived. You know, the heads of nations, they don't understand why they're having the wars and the troubles they are. They don't understand why it's all fighting and everyone for selfish advantage. They just do not understand it. The kingdom of God is coming in our time. The kingdom of God is going to do away with this Satan. The kingdom of God is going to do away with all of the troubles. And we're going to have peace, and we're going to have it in our time. And that is the hope that I am bringing you. For the free literature offered on this program, write Herbert W. Armstrong, Pasadena, California, 91123. In Canada, Box 44, Vancouver, B.C. Or in the continental United States, you may call this toll-free number, 800 423-4444. That's 800-423-4444. In California, dial direct 213-577-5225. The preceding program and all literature were produced by the Worldwide Church of God.